Can you imagine a car that runs on water, without spending a dime on gasoline? It sounds fascinating, but it's more legend than reality. From its alleged invention to its operation, many things seem peculiar. Yet, periodically, this idea resurfaces, accompanied by conspiracy theories. But, so far, it's more fiction than fact. It's essential to maintain skepticism and investigate the truth behind these stories before buying into such theories. The invention of a water-powered car is shrouded in an aura of mystery and fascination. Perhaps one of the most emblematic cases in this story is that of inventor Stanley Meyer. On March 21, 1998, Meyer, already known for his various inventions, was at a crucial lunch meeting. He was meeting with Belgian investors, hopeful of securing funding for his latest and most ambitious project, a car powered by water. Maya's dream was a vehicle that, using only 75 liters of distilled water, could cross the entire American territory. For Maya, this invention was special, a milestone in his career. However, his lunch took a tragic and unexpected turn. After taking a sip of his juice, he suddenly convulsed, muttering words that shocked everyone around, they poisoned me. Desperate, Maya ran to the parking lot, collapsing shortly after. These would be his final words. Simultaneously, there are reports that Jean Chambrin, a French engineer with similar projects, mysteriously disappeared in Brazil. This series of events generated numerous conspiracy theories. After all, who might be behind such acts? All tycoons? Ambitious entrepreneurs trying to suppress a revolutionary technology? The police, after exhaustive investigations, attributed Maya's death to a cerebral aneurysm. There were no traces of poison. However, many still question, and it is believed that there is something darker at play. But what makes this invention so attractive? The answer lies in hydrogen. The proposal of a car powered by water is based on the idea of using hydrogen as fuel. Hydrogen has astonishing properties. It is the most abundant element in the universe and, when used, it emits no pollutants. Moreover, its energy density is extraordinary. If compared, it produces energy about 200 times that of lithium-ion batteries. And to add another positive point, one kilogram of hydrogen has a power similar to 3.5 liters of oil. These properties make hydrogen an incredible candidate for the energy revolution. However, the challenge lies in how to obtain it. While hydrogen is abundant, it is not readily available for use. One of the largest sources of hydrogen is water. Now, imagine a vehicle that, by consuming water, extracts the hydrogen for energy and releases oxygen. Fantastic, isn't it? However, the challenges are significant. Separating hydrogen from water requires a significant amount of energy, and paradoxically, this energy can be greater than the energy generated by the hydrogen itself. Thus, the idea of having a car do this in real time while in motion is not exactly efficient. This raises a question, if we need so much energy to extract hydrogen from water, why not use that energy directly to power the car? It seems like a more direct and sensible approach. Even with these considerations, hydrogen research did not stop. Since the 90s, there have been efforts to develop electric vehicles powered by pure hydrogen, not water. These vehicles, in fact, exist today. They emit no pollutants and, in theory, are more practical than traditional electric vehicles. Fueling a hydrogen car takes minutes, while charging an electric battery can take hours. These innovations, however, raise even more questions. How do these hydrogen cars really work? Are they the next big automotive revolution, surpassing electric and gasoline vehicles? 
the future is uncertain, but the pursuit of cleaner and more efficient energy solutions is an ongoing journey. In the 70s, the energy landscape was undergoing a significant transformation. General Motors, one of the leading automotive companies in the US, was particularly attentive. Engineers from this giant corporation viewed the effects of the oil crisis with growing concern. It was a period of great uncertainty, where each dawn brought news of escalating prices. Not only was oil becoming more expensive, but there was a genuine fear about its availability. In this almost panic-inducing context, a revolutionary idea emerged, what if the world used hydrogen as an alternative? Governments and industries, recognizing the gravity of the situation, began to outline plans. The goal? To integrate hydrogen into our global energy system, from its production to its distribution and consumption. However, the petroleum industry, this energy giant, was not ready to relinquish its throne. Its dominance in the energy market over the decades reduced the urgency. Investments, both public and private, shifted back to oil and other traditional sources. After all, why risk the unknown? But the world never stops changing. Since the turbulent 70s, global priorities have transformed. Today, the absence of fuel is not the only specter. Society demands more. The outcry is for a cleaner, greener, and more conscious world. Hydrogen-powered cars, once forgotten, have returned to the discussion. However, when it comes to hydrogen car, many have a distorted image. Many envision a vehicle similar to a gasoline-powered one. But hydrogen is peculiar. Its storage demands innovative solutions. Its efficiency needs to be much higher than that of common vehicles, which have a limit of 25%. There are indeed projects that have adapted regular cars for hydrogen. They are interesting vehicles, but with limitations. Compared to electric motors, they are less efficient and they still face environmental challenges, such as nitrogen oxide emissions. And that's where the big turnaround came, fuel cells. These are advanced systems that convert hydrogen into electricity with about 50% efficiency. This meant a true revolution. Hydrogen cars, through this system, are essentially electric. But how does this work in practice? The technical term for these cars is FCEV. The process is fascinating. Hydrogen reacts with oxygen, generating a chemical reaction. This produces a significant amount of energy, used to power the electric motor. And this is where things get really interesting. While resembling electric vehicles, EVs, in many ways, FCEVs have a distinguishing feature the origin of their energy. In an FCEV, hydrogen is refueled in minutes. Inside the car, hydrogen is stored in a special tank. Developing this tank was a monumental challenge. The required pressure is impressive, reaching 700 bars. But the engineers didn't give up. And in the end, they not only managed to safely store hydrogen, but also ensured it was used efficiently. In an FCEV, the hydrogen from the tank is directed to the fuel cell. There, it undergoes a process called reverse electrolysis. It reacts with oxygen and produces electrical energy. And the byproduct of this reaction? Simply water. That's right, the only residue is water vapor. This captivates many sustainability enthusiasts. There are no harmful emissions. Hugo Spowers is one of these pioneers. He saw beyond the limitations and developed the Rosa, an innovative car. His car is not only lightweight and efficient, but also represents a new path for the industry. The Rosa refuels quickly and has a range of 500 kilometers, compare this with electric cars, which can take hours to recharge. 
Some, like the Nissan Leaf, only reach 250 kilometers. Others, like the Tesla Model T, reach 550 kilometers. But then, are hydrogen cars the future? It's complicated. While they have many merits, they also face challenges. Only time will tell if they will be the next automotive revolution. What we do know is that they represent another step in our quest for a better world. And in the end, that is the true journey. The comparison between hydrogen-powered cars and electric ones is inevitable. Both emerge as promising alternatives to fossil fuels, hailed as potential saviors of our environment. Electric cars, as the name suggests, operate on electricity. They are powered by an integrated battery, a fundamental component that supplies energy to the electric motor. The motor, in turn, drives the wheels and propels the vehicle. This battery can be charged at home or at charging stations through an external power source. Hydrogen-powered cars, or fuel cell electric vehicles, FCEVs, operate a bit differently. Instead of a battery, these vehicles store hydrogen in a specialized tank. The fascinating process here is that they generate their own electricity. How do they do this? Through fuel cells. These are like mini power plants that produce electricity on board the vehicle. To better understand the efficiency, let's visualize a scenario. Suppose we have 100 watts of electricity, originating from a renewable source, perhaps a wind turbine. If this energy were directed to an FCEV, it would have to be converted into hydrogen. The process, called electrolysis, is approximately 75% efficient. This means that even before the hydrogen is used, we've already lost 25% of the energy. But it doesn't end there. After obtaining the hydrogen, we have to transport it to fueling stations. And then, it has to be converted back into electricity to power the vehicle. Each step has its own energy losses. In the end, out of the initial 100 watts, only 38 watts are effectively used by the hydrogen car. Contrast this with electric cars. The efficiency is notably higher. Out of 100 watts, the losses in transmission and charging are significantly lower. They manage to use approximately 80 watts of the initial energy, making them much more efficient. In terms of cost-effectiveness, electric cars also seem to have an advantage. Various studies, including one from Bloomberg BNEF, suggest that electric vehicles are more cost-effective. The U.S. Department of Energy has also weighed in on this. They mentioned that for hydrogen cars to be competitive, the price of fuel cells needs to drop drastically. Additionally, hydrogen itself is not cheap. And the cost doesn't just refer to the gas itself, but also to the logistics involved in its production, transportation, and storage. The current production of hydrogen relies heavily on fossil fuels. Natural gas, oil, and coal are the main sources. Natural gas alone accounts for nearly half of global hydrogen production. While natural gas is a cleaner source compared to other forms of fossil fuels, it is not entirely emission-free. So, the question arises, we truly being green by using hydrogen cars? Hydrogen storage is another major concern. The gas is naturally low in density. Therefore, to be effectively stored and transported, its density needs to be increased. This is done through compression in high-pressure tanks or by cooling it to extremely low temperatures. Both processes are expensive and complex. Safety is a crucial consideration. Hydrogen is known to be highly flammable. While proponents of hydrogen cars, such as Toyota and Honda, assure that their vehicles are safe, there is still a natural skepticism. There is evidence of this. For example, 
The Eurotunnel, which connects the UK to France, prohibits hydrogen-powered vehicles. When weighing all the pros and cons, we have to ask ourselves, where do hydrogen cars fit into the future landscape? While they may have a role to play, the current trend suggests that electric cars have a clear advantage in terms of efficiency, cost-effectiveness, and infrastructure. Despite the controversies surrounding the technology, the potential of hydrogen cars is recognized. According to the conversation, they are a viable alternative for heavier vehicles like vans and trucks that require larger batteries. The BBC reported on South Korea's ambitious plans to expand its hydrogen infrastructure, with a goal of 660 pumps by 2030. Toyota, in an interview with CNN, firmly believes in hydrogen as a promising solution to reduce carbon emissions in future transportation. They anticipate that this energy option may prove to be an attractive choice for the average driver, combining efficiency and sustainability.